Hi, this is Cassandra from Homeschool Peace. Today I'm going to be sharing with you my used curriculum buying guide. But before I do, I have a fantastic announcement to share with our whole Homeschool Peace community. Just this week here at Homeschool Peace on YouTube, we reached 1,000 subscribers. I'm so excited, guys, and I thank you to everyone who has already subscribed and if you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button and also just click the notification button as well just so you can find out whenever I post new video and new content. But for this video, if you are starting to hunt around for new curriculum for next year, hopefully some of these ideas in my buying guide will help you out if you're looking for used material. The first question is, when should you buy new versus buying used curriculum? There's really no right or wrong answer. Some families love that big unboxing day of the new curriculum with their family. Other families need to shop around. Maybe you like to find that bargain that deal or there's some budget constraints that maybe you need to be able to buy used curriculum. Other families can do a mix of both. And here in our home, we definitely do that mix. I buy some new curriculum and I also buy some used curriculum. It works really well for our family. If you though are a first time homeschooler and you're feeling a little overwhelmed with all the curriculum choices, I would highly recommend for the first year just to buy new. You know, figure out what curriculum you like, buy the big package of everything that you need all in one so that you don't have to think about you know, where you're buying this, what deal you're getting. It's just all in one, so you'll be able to teach that first year. You know, once you get your feet wet with homeschooling and you're feeling more comfortable with your material, maybe you start liking a certain type of uh, material or company you are teaching from, you can then start hum hunting around for some deals. But I wait at least maybe that, at least one year, two years into homeschooling before I'd start hunting for the used curriculum. Another benefit of used curriculum is if you're thinking about maybe switching curriculums, maybe you were using something like Horizons for your math, and now you're thinking about, maybe I wanna to switch to Math UC. You know, being able to buy some used blocks or buying some a used teacher manual might be really handy for you because then you can see what the curriculum's all about, get a feel for the material before pulling the trigger on a larger package. So all of those things really help out whenever you're trying to figure out when is it worth buying new versus buying used. So the next question is, where do you go to find used material? So my first go-to is Facebook. I love going to the Facebook groups, doing a quick search for whatever material I'm looking for, if it's sunlight, if it's math UC, and I'll type in things like buy, trade, sell, or user group with that curriculum name. And typically things pop up, I then request to join the group and just see if that is a page where people are selling and buying used material. Another place to go is on Amazon. So I will go a lot of times on the Amazon on use option for books, especially since I use Sunlight, and Sunlight has a lot of literature books that I have to pick up for these cores. And so sometimes buying used books through Amazon works well. You know, I have to weigh the cost as well. Like sometimes the new book is about the same cost as the used book. So in those options, I would probably just buy the brand new one, but that's still an option is going to Amazon and seeing what used material is available there. I also will use eBay. Um, I have had some success in using eBay. I do though find that Facebook is definitely my preference in more of those group settings because those are users that have been using the material. Um, you're not really, in some ways, sometimes you are working with a merchant, but most times you're working with just homeschool families that are selling the material. And I find that there's a lot more pictures and a lot more detail on a Facebook group um, versus on eBay. I feel like the detail is a little harder to follow or maybe there's not as many pictures and I'm buying it from an actual merchant. It's still a great option. So if you're hunting for some used material, still check eBay, that's a great place to check out material. Um, another place is Homeschool Classifieds. I'm gonna have the link down below. It's actually a website where they um, sell used material. Um, I know other families that have used the Homeschool Classifieds page to buy curriculum. Um, I actually haven't had much success using that page. I find that there's not as many uh, photographs of the material and it's not as much information as I want. Um, I really sometimes, um, you know, might not feel as comfortable on the classified site as I do on something like on my Facebook group that was sort of my go-to, but homeschool classifieds is still a great option if you are hunting for that material. Another option is to check out what's in your local area or in your state. If there are state um, homeschool conventions or maybe it's a seminar for homeschoolers, a lot of times they will have a buy, trade, and sell time 
during the day at a homeschool convention. And so obviously with this year in 2020 and COVID, I'm not sure how many of those conventions would be happening, but it's still pretty interesting to look around just to see if there's anything going on in your area. When you attend those things, a lot of times they'll have a time period set up, table set up that uh, families will just sell their materials, trade their materials. And so that's a really great place to get it. The last thing would be any co-ops or homeschool groups you're a part of. This could be from a Facebook group that's local, or maybe it's your co-op that's local. A lot of times your co-op will might, may organize a buy, trade, and sell day. And if they don't have that going on, maybe that's something you can suggest or, or help organize. And that would just be a day that anybody in your local area would get together. Same idea, setting up tables, having the material presented. You can meet up at local parks and try to sell that way too. So those are some great places to find your materials. And again, my go-to though is still my Facebook groups. And I do enjoy being able to search in those groups and be able to find those materials that I need, but there is a lot of different options out there. All right, question number three is now that you've found where you can be searching for your used curriculum, what do you do next? What I would first recommend is actually going to the main curriculum's website that would be for the new material. Take down some notes, right? What bundle were you looking to buy? What was included? Was there any discounts? What was the final price? Was shipping extra? And then write down information on the material. What was the copyright? What version is that material? And then actually do some digging on that company. Note, was there any significant periods of time that in a certain year they made a large update to their material so that you know, oh, I don't ever want to get you know, this particular curriculum past this certain copyright date. So you can be able to know what either version or copyright is what you're where, what you're trying to target for your used material. And then being able to write down the total package of what would it cost if you bought it new today. Then you'll have that in your back pocket when you go onto any of these used websites so you can compare back to what it is new. Then when you're on those websites, ask a ton of questions. Ask to see a picture of the copyright or the versions. Ask to see, is there any marks on the page? Show me the marks on the page. Are they just a pencil or are they in pen? How much marked up is it? Is there any damage to the books? And understanding what if shipping is included or if that's extra, just the full picture of what that used material is. And then you'll be able to go back and compare it to what that brand new package is, and that's going to really be able to help you weigh out, is it worth it? Which actually brings me to that next question, question number four, when is the cost worth it? And that's something that I always have to evaluate myself because I do like to buy used curriculum, but for in my home, when I'm just buying like a small, small reader, it's just a small literature book. You know, if I can save a dollar or two, then I, I think it's worth it. If I'm just buying a single book, that's where I would find it worth it. But if I'm buying, um, you know, a big package and out of the package, if I compare that to a brand new versus the used package, and maybe out of that, I'm only saving like 20 bucks. So, you know, it's my large package for the year and there's really only a $20 difference between all the used sets that I keep seeing compared to what it is brand new. For the peace of mind to get something brand new and know that there's nothing wrong with it, there's no issues on versioning or damage to it, it may be worth it just at that moment to buy the new curriculum. So what I would do is after I write down that what is the cost of the new, new material, then again, comparing what am I seeing on all these used sites between eBay or maybe a Facebook group and just checking out what I'm seeing and sort of get yourself sort of settle down on like, what is that number? Like, what is it worth it for you? Is it 20 bucks? Is it 40 bucks? You know, some families there, you know, there, there's probably a range there that some families would find, you know, something worth the savings and other families like, no, I, that's not worth it for me. I'd rather just get the new. So jot down some notes, take some time to really think through what you really need to purchase. Question number five is all related to shipping. So whenever you are working with a seller and you're trying to determine the final cost, some sellers will include shipping, some will not. So obviously that's something you'll wanna find out ahead of time. And then when it comes to shipping, what you're gonna to have to decide is how comfortable are you having an item shipped through something like media mail versus something with insurance or being sent through a priority or a FedEx. So obviously there's cost related to that. Media mail is one of the cheapest ways to send material 
material, especially your, your books and printed material. So most sellers will use the media mail. With media mail, I have found that it takes a lot longer to get the media mail. Um, the tracking's not as well, like it doesn't update as well. I also find that my books and material are a little more bumped up and a little banged up coming in and the envelope might even be a little damaged compared to something like Priority Mail or FedEx. So you sort of have to weigh out that risk and see like what's worth it for you. If I'm buying just a small reader and the reader's like $8, I might choose that Media Mail is perfectly fine. You know, I'm not, it's not a huge risk. If the book gets a little bit damaged, you know, we're only talking about one book, it's fine, let's just ship Media Mail. If I was trying to buy a big used bundle, like a, sun, a full sunlight core, and it has the instructional manual sheets and uh, a whole pile of books, it might be at that point that I may ask the seller if I could pay extra to have a priority mail with some insurance on my material because I know it's going to be um, shipped a little bit faster and maybe protected better and I seem to have better luck with getting the priority mail or even something like FedEx. Now obviously there's cost related to that. So again, going back to like when is it worth it, you're gonna need to make sure you have those costs added in when you're doing that comparison to see is this actually worth buying the used material. But make sure that when you're approaching a seller that if there's something special that you want with the shipping or if you'd rather pay extra for some insurance, make sure you're communicating that upfront before any final invoicing or payments happen. So the next question is about payment. How do you pay for this used material? Any of the sites that I've been part of or different groups, they've only ever used PayPal. I feel very comfortable with PayPal and I really do like their invoicing system. If I was ever asked to use like a Cash App or Venmo, I would just say, no, sorry, I only use PayPal. I do request that the seller invoices me. I like getting that invoice. Typically the seller will include some details about exactly what am I purchasing. It'll include, you know, some shipping fees. Um, highly recommend that if you're doing this, do not ever use like a friend or family type of selling or if the, if the seller says, would you just send this through friend and family? If you do not know that person, say no walk away. Make sure if you are buying um, used curriculum from somebody that you have no connection with whatsoever, make sure you are using the business side more the invoicing system um, so that it is secure with, with um, PayPal. And then with PayPal, um, you know, after I, you know, I'm looking at the invoice, if there hits a point that I'm just not comfortable or there's something that looks off or a shipping fee doesn't look right, you know, ask the questions. Don't just send, you know, the payment right away. If there's something that makes you feel like something's weird or off, ask the questions and make sure you feel comfortable before sending payment. But out of any of the options, I would highly recommend sticking with PayPal whenever you are buying used curriculum. The next question is how much is your time worth? You know, we already talked about comparing the cost of a new set to the cost of a used set and seeing like what is that price and what is that number that makes you um, happy? Like what is that difference that you're like, that's a great savings, that's worth it for me to go ahead and buy used. So just to, something to make sure you're thinking about as well is how much time do you need to spend to hunt down the materials you're looking for? In that case, you know, maybe you're finding that you're spending more more time than you have just trying to find used material that that's where you might need to say hey maybe buying new is worth it for me or if you're able to find though a package and you're like if that's exactly what I lo I'm looking for and I didn't have to spend that much time then obviously buying the used might be worth it but just making sure you're at least aware of how much time you're like searching on your phone or searching on your computer and trying to hunt down the used material just whenever you're sort of planning out and that's why it might be worth it for you too to maybe only select one or two subjects that you're trying to buy used and then knowing that the other ones that you'll buy brand new just so you're not even just overwhelmed and having too much of your time spent in just looking at so much different used curriculum almost like target like one subject at a time and see what you can find for the used material. I hope this was helpful going through this used curriculum buying guide. There isn't a lot of right and wrong answers. You know, everybody feels different ways. Some people have different goals in mind or have different comfort levels with what type of risk they wanna take or you know what they feel comfortable with, with shipping or charges or fees and how much their time is worth. So there's no like one size fits all, but I hope some of these tips or ideas helped you when you're trying to see if you know buying a used curriculum package would make sense versus 
buying something new. If you have any questions before you leave, don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe, and I will talk to you soon. Goodbye.